I could put my husband in a home tomorrow and go back to work full time. I could not live with myself if I did that to him. So, um, you kind of learn to live with the judgment, but uh, I want people to know that when they look at somebody who's homeless, um, they could be looking at themselves. They could be looking at their mother who takes care of their father if she lost everything. You know, we're homeless because there was no health insurance. Bottom line, why we're seeing such a huge divide between the rich and the poor in this country grow is because of that essential basic human right. We would not be homeless. We would be millionaires. Hate to say it, folks, we were almost there. Yeah, we were almost there. We had an ocean view home. Uh, we had a three-bedroom, two-bath rental property, two blocks from a university. We had a business on, in, in, a, in a large mall. Very successful. And uh, we shouldn't have lost everything. It was just a slow process. I found everything gone. Uh, the bank, we only owned six years on our Ocean View house. And before it was even a problem with the payments, I started asking the bank if they would please allow me to extend the note back to the original 15 years and even keep the higher rate because the market dropped in 2007, the year my husband had his, uh, his stroke and everything, and um, they refused. So essentially, in the end, the bank got the house, and um, we had another investment property, and the investment property I sold, and that, that went to pay for a, a surgery and, you know, living expenses for a year, and he was in and out of the hospital all the time, and, um, you know, it was hard. And because at the time we weren't indigent, just everything went, you know, to pay the bills. They actually have a phrase for it, social services, they call it spending down your assets. They know you're going to go broke. Not having insurance wasn't a choice. It was not a choice. My husband had his first brain surgery at 34, had his first major stroke at 34, was diagnosed with hydrocephalus at 34, and you know, guess what? Nobody will insure. He was a pedestrian and an 86-year-old retired attorney drove through the building he was in and struck him with a car. Uh, so he had to have his first brain surgery, he had a shunt put in, and he was completely paralyzed on his left side, which was his dominant side. And, he was a professional artist at the time. It was eight years before he painted or sculpted again, but within two years, my husband made an amazing recovery. He never went on disability, and um, he went back to work. Uh, he bought a barber shop, and um, we had a good life. We didn't know that that original brain injury, which precluded him from being able to get ever in the state of Florida um, health insurance or life insurance, um, that started a process of cerebral vascular loss, so little tiny blood vessels in his brain were dying, and um, we had no idea. In 07, he started having chest pains, and um, again, because even though we had money, but we didn't have insurance, they have a different criterion of care, and so instead of sending him straight to the cardiologist, um, they kept the, the, his GP kept doing the blood test, the Holt monitor, and finding nothing. Finally, at three months, he uh, transferred him to the cardiologist, and the morning that my husband uh, went blind with severe amnesia was uh, the, the same day that he had an appointment that afternoon for the cardiologist. He was diagnosed eventually with a very rare form of blindness from brain injury called cortical blindness and uh, early onset dementia at the age of 52. They sent me home and told me with him and uh, told me he was going to be in the bedroom all the time and maybe after three or four months I'd be able to leave him for 15-20 minutes. They knew he required round-the-clock care. I've always been told he required round-the-clock supervision and uh, they're, they just left it to me, and uh, we had a small son who was seven at the time. They were telling me from the beginning that I should put him in a home. My husband was raised on the boys' ranch, and uh, he was abused in institutionalized care. I'm not going to put him in a home. It's my best friend. A lot of people are homeless for the reason I'm homeless. I met a lot of people that take care of their mother who's really ill, or... Um, or on disability and uh, they just don't have enough to pay rent. And that's the truth, is there's a significant portion of the population that's homeless today that are disabled and they're trying to live on disability and um, you know it's not enough to live on and the waiting list for things is insane. For a lot of us it's the option that you have. The only other option is uh, a really, really, really bad environment. My option for us was uh, 
public housing in South Florida, and I, um, I was strong arm robbed in front of our house by not one, not two, but four, four youths. They had two getaway cars, and they beat me in the street, pistol whipped me, I still have the scar. And um, it was pretty amazing because my son, who was 11 at the time, uh, heard me screaming in the middle of the street, and my husband with the cane, he came, my son came running out into the street, at, and uh, my husband followed, and my son punched the guy who was pistol whipping me in the face, and the guy dropped the gun, he was so stunned. My husband beat him with the cane. You know those guys, when they all got back to the car, they were looking at each other and going, we're never telling this story. We're, you know, this didn't happen. That was it for us. And those are the options people have. A lot of the time it's unsafe housing, really, really scary places. Um, my son was mugged too at 11 in broad daylight. If you're in an impoverished community and you're in those housing, a lot of the time uh, the violence is on the weak people in the community. And uh, they saw my husband and I as weak. And, um, you know, that's it. So it's not really safe for the disabled a lot. I happened to look uh, online at brain injury and I found the shelter care brain injury um, program and it's something that I always wanted to do because uh, there's a lot there's a lot of people with brain injury that live now that died you know 30 years ago if you suffered a major car trauma if you had a major subdural hematoma you probably died um, but now you live and unfortunately the truth is is what happened to my husband happens to a lot of people who suffer a severe severe brain injury um, they end up with early onset dementia just like pugilist dementia kind of thing you know and um, there's really nowhere for them in most of the country except old folks homes and you know when you're 45 50 years old you don't want to be surrounded by 80 year olds and the culture is different it's a miserable place for those people so um, I saw this program I thought it was an amazing thing that uh, if I got the opportunity I would want to volunteer at and be a part of and um, I saw that they had a program too for the homeless so I called I gotta say to people at first place that it's amazing it really is Everyone there is so amazing. It's a, uh, it's a homeless shelter for um, families and women with children. And uh, the people there are so warm and welcoming and real. And uh, you don't feel negatively judged. And there's not a whole, there, it's just really, you feel like they're partners and helping you figure out you know, what's going to work best for you. And that's one of the most amazing things about the program. Because I'm insane, I travel with a crazy man, a, a teenage boy, a 27-year-old parrot, and a dog. So uh, we're in what's called the parking program. <laughs> and uh, so we have a safe parking place that, and um, we sleep in the van. And in the daytime, we have access to a communal living area so we can cook. We have a refrigerator. Um, there's uh, bathrooms and showers and all that kind of thing, which people don't realize. I had not looked in a mirror in probably a year. So uh, you just don't even realize when you're on the road all the time and you're homeless that uh, you just get used to not having access to things that normal people take for granted, like a mirror. I learned to wash my hair with a gallon jug of water in the van, <laughs> cold water, and be glad I had it. Now I'm just like kind of uh, hoping we can get a place and my son is in an amazing school here. He loves it. I want to be able to stay and I'm waiting today. If, if, we, don't, if we don't get approved for this uh, spousal pay, there's supposedly another one that maybe he could be in, but it very clearly states in the paperwork that you have to have been, um, had stable housing for three months to even qualify. You just don't expect to end up here. You don't expect to work hard your whole life and, uh, you know, be living the dream, driving the, the bright red convertible on the ocean, you know. We had a good life, we had a great place, and um, we should have been able to at least keep our house, you know. They shouldn't have taken our house.